Tormented by abuse at an early age, Donald Henry Gaskins had accumulated a long criminal record throughout his childhood and teenage years. Then between the years of 1953 and 1982, he would murder 14 people and claim to have killed dozens more. His troubled childhood would set the groundwork for a life of crime, leading Gaskins, or Pee Wee, to become one of South Carolina's most prolific serial killers. Welcome to 10-Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. I'm Joe, the host, and thank you for joining today. And I hope that you're enjoying uh, a little bit of the holiday break. Not necessarily that you are on a break, but I'm on a break. I'm still doing the podcast, obviously, but that's, that's about it. I've taken most of the month of December off from my regular job, and I've just been at home doing nothing, which honestly feels pretty good. Now, I have been catching up on some true crime documentaries that I've missed, and I've also watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation four times in this month alone. So you can't really say I'm doing nothing. But if you were to look at me, it would look like uh, a guy that was getting dressed at the YMCA and he realized that his clothes got stolen and they said, hey, here's some stuff in the lost and found. Just put this on. That's what I've been looking like the last couple of weeks. Just barely Walmart presentable. And I've also been looking up a lot of stories that you guys have been emailing me. And by the way, if you want to do that, joe at 10minutemurder.com. And uh, there's some very interesting ones that I didn't even know existed. Um, so we'll get to those in 2023 for sure. Before we get going with your story today, this is your reminder to subscribe wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts, connect with 10 Minute Murder on social media. Links are in the show notes of this episode as well as at 10minutemurder.com. Now to the story. Donald Henry Gaskins was born on March 13, 1933, in Florence County, South Carolina, to mother Eula Parrott. At only one year old, he drank a bottle of kerosene, which caused him to have regular convulsions until the age of three. As a result of his petite frame, Donald was teased and given the nickname Pee Wee at an early age. His childhood, much like his nickname, was plagued by ridicule and violence. At home, Donald was abused by his stepfather. His mother, who occasionally worked as a prostitute, would regularly beat and sexually humiliate her son, even going as far as selling him to her clients for further sexual abuse. This abuse and neglect would quickly influence the violence and ultimately the heinous murders that Donald carried out. After Donald quit school at the age of 11, he began working on cars at a local garage. It's here where he would meet two boys around his same age named Danny and Marsh. Together, they formed a little group of delinquents, called themselves the Trouble Trio. The trio spent the next few years burglarizing homes, stealing cars, and committing more perverse crimes, like sexually assaulting little boys, and eventually gang-raping Marsh's little sister. Donald was, at this point, still only 13 years old. In 1946, as Pee Wee was burglarizing a home, he hit a young woman in the head with an axe after she caught him in the act. The girl luckily survived the attack, and Donald would be arrested and convicted, being sent to the South Carolina Industrial School for Boys until he turned 18. Because of his small stature, he became an easy target, and during his time in reform school, he was attacked, beaten, and raped. Reform school did nothing to curb Donald's violent urges, and two years after he was released at 18, he was arrested for attacking a young girl with a hammer after a dispute. He was arrested and sentenced to six years in prison. It would be here, in prison, where Donald would commit his first murder. He slit the throat of a fellow inmate, earning him respect among the others, as well as three years tacked on his sentence after he claimed self-defense. Two years after his release from prison, he was arrested again for raping a 12-year-old girl. He was sentenced to six years. Pee Wee was paroled in 1968 and vowed to never return to prison. But not only would he return to prison, his crimes would soon be escalating in brutality. Donald's first non-prison-related murder would be in 1969, when he picked up a hitchhiker in South Carolina. He raped and tortured his victim for as long as he possibly could, before sinking her weighted body in a swamp. This would be the first in a string of serial killings, and Donald would often drive around the coastal highways to pick up his victims, 
While he targeted mostly women, men weren't immune to his wrath, and he had a few male victims as well. His process for the killings is by far one of the most sadistic and disturbing details of this case. Donald would torture the majority of his victims, sometimes leaving them alive for days on end and cannibalizing their body parts. He would force his victims to watch and, in some cases, have them partake in the eating. By the 1970s, Pee Wee began to target people closer to him. He was known around town as being explosive and mentally disturbed, and most people avoided him at all costs. One woman, named Doreen Dempsey, however, considered Donald a friend. And yet Donald would commit one of the most grotesque and unforgivable acts at her and her baby's expense. An overt racist, Donald would rape and drown Doreen upon hearing that she became pregnant with her second child with an African-American man. He took Doreen and her two-year-old daughter to a wooded area, and after he killed her, he sexually assaulted and killed her daughter. He buried the two together. At 42 years old, in the mid-70s, Donald had been steadily murdering people for several years. But after his van broke down on the highway, he called an ex-con named Walter Neely to help. Soon, Donald was hired as a hitman, where he would go on to kill people for money, murdering anyone who stood in his way or defied him. At one point, Donald called Walter up again to help him bury two bodies, and in the process, showed him the location of a burial site where his various victims were buried. Donald's trust in Walter Neely would ultimately lead to his undoing. After his sexual advances were rejected by a 13-year-old named Kim Gelkins, Donald raped and murdered her. Kim's disappearance raised the suspicion of authorities, and suspicions were confirmed when authorities searched Donald's apartment and found clothing belonging to Kim Gelkins. Donald was arrested. While waiting for the trial and under pressure from investigators, Walter Neely would show the police Donald's burial site. Eight bodies were found, and both Donald and Walter were charged with eight counts of murder. On May 24, 1976, Donald was tried on one count of murder and sentenced to death, but later commuted to life in prison after the Supreme Court ruled that the death penalty was unconstitutional. The death penalty was restored in 1978, and in 1982, when Donald was hired to kill a death row inmate in prison, he was convicted and received a death sentence again. He was executed on September 6, 1991, in the electric chair. During his time in prison, Donald Pee Wee Gaskins would confess to dozens of other murders. Authorities believe that his count is in the hundreds, making him one of South Carolina's most heinous and prolific serial killers. It's easy to look back on his life and childhood and recognize the factors that played into his rage and perversions. Childhood trauma often makes up the blueprints for future behaviors, but ultimately, it would be Donald's own decisions and disregard for human life that caused him to commit the most vile and unspeakable offenses. Authorities aren't sure how many people fell victim to Donald Pee Wee Gaskins, but what is known for sure is that he had no empathy for others, and that in this case, the punishment fit the crime.